to do it, right? Um, and it's that's how we started figuring it out that yes, this attack can be franchisable since before even 2020, but I didn't have the guts to do it until 2020 happened, pandemic. So you make the decision, you you become a franchise or start the process in September. Did you use franchise consultants to help you? How did you go about even becoming a franchise? Like where where do you go? You've decided that you want to do this. How how do you even find help to help you do that? Yeah, so so we have one of the uh, the board of directors of District Taco is, is Sam Chamberlain, okay, and um and he put us in contact with other um you know consultants and and all that. So yes, we we did ask a lot of questions how to do it. So if you think about your expectations on day one, well let, let me fast forward. How many locations do you guys have now? Fourteen. Uh, two. Two franchise open right now, 16. Okay. You you get into the process of doing this. What is your how does the dream change? What is the dream when you decide to become a franchise? I don't think the dream changed. I think since day one, I really wanted to expand with this retackle, right? Either it was gonna be all um you know corporate owned or it's gonna be franchise uh franchise world. I think what happened was that um you know we we wanted to grow in a fast pace, right? And and we have really good franchise. We have we had before District Taco, we were getting a lot of emails from people that want to franchise District Taco, right? Hmm. Um, and that was that was before the pandemic, before the all the franchise world. So at that point, we already had this pipeline of people that wanted to franchise uh, District Taco. So we you know we contacted them back again. Right, and um, we got together. You know, we they went through district taco, and um, and, and they really like what we planning to do. So we decided to do it with them. So now you have few few open, few franchisees open. How many? I assume you have a bunch in development too. Yeah, seventy five stores. Uh, eating stores. Like, can you? As an entrepreneur, can you pause and pinch yourself and say, I mean, this is pretty crazy from a food truck. And so like your vision was, I know how a good taco tastes and Americanized tacos do not hit the spot. So you knew you had the product, but now like, can you pinch yourself and say, wow, we we're actually developing this thing. Um, I, it's not easy, Nick. I mean, look, I think, <laughs> you know, you're laughing about this because I'm, I'm telling you, it is, um, we we treat our, um, our franchisees like partners, you know, um, they can call me anytime and I'm there for them, right? I always say we want to make sure that our franchisees are very successful because that's how we're going to be successful, right? So even though it's a different business, I'm still seen everything and um and and i feel like i'm more more partners with them than than i am with my managers you know my store managers because we work together a lot you know so so this is i mean this is great um what's happening for district tackle you know um now i'm, I'm telling i'm a dreamer i I'm, I'm i came to united states when i was 16 years old and i always wanted to you know um do something better every single time. I started selling flowers, you know, when I was a little kid at 13 years old, right? And, and it's funny because somebody he, um, asked me one time, at what age you actually decided to be an entrepreneur? And then I'm like, huh, thinking about it, it was when I was in Mexico selling flowers, you know, it was in Mexico selling popsicles, you know what I mean? So. So I always had that dream that nothing is impossible in this life, but you just got to think about it. You know, you just, I always figure out while we're going, you know? So, so yes, I can, I don't know the next, you know what I want to do was next for district tackle. I really want to put district tackle on every American dining table. You know, that's what I want to put district tackle. You know what I mean? Because that's actually what I'm, what I'm bringing on the table today. I'm bringing a quality Mexican food made fast, you know, it's, um, and, and, and I think it's, we're going to be, we're going to go big. 
I want to I want to unpack something from from your story cuz cuz I hear it uh and I have a feeling you you won't like me saying this but I can tell that you're you're a humble guy. Like you said like my franchisees can call me anytime and I'm there for them. That's that's a mentality that's that's different. You're you're an operator. You're not like a suit and tie business owner who who just looks at P&Ls. Like you can tell that about you. And I bet you like if you if you flash backwards to selling flowers in Mexico, that that same customer service centric mindset I I'm sure I'm sure like money is always nice, but if I'm guessing the the motivation for you is almost like winning the game. It's not about the cash that comes alongside it, that it's about a game. Is it are those accurate statements? That's that's actually wow, that's that's really good. Well, money is very important, right? Um, ROIs, right, is, is extremely important. For me, it's a more proving that it can be done, right? For me, personally, for me, you know, um, and, 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 and yes, I am more like an operation guy, you know, um, but I have hired people a lot more smarter than me. I cannot even done it without them. You know, this tackle wouldn't be the same if I didn't have those guys. Right. I mean, my team is amazing. And, and I always tell them, if this retractor is very successful, it's not because of me. It's because of you guys. Right. It's because of them. But I always hire a lot smarter than the next one. Right. If this guy is smart, I need to hire another one that's smarter than that guy. And we keep building that company with the same mentality of keep improving every single day. I'm I'm curious as as a leader. I mean, I I respect that tremendously. Like I think the best businesses in the world are built around great great human beings. Or you know, there's there's a rare scenario where you have a a Steve Jobs who's known as an asshole, but his genius really motivates people around him. Um, but when you're when you're recruiting someone in in today's world, and you you hear about the labor markets being being tight, you're finding the right person that you're like this person's smarter than me. Is it money that drives them in or is it culture or is there some sort of combination when you're trying to convince someone to expand the depth of your team at District Taco? I think it's a combination, Nick. I mean, look, I if, if you, you are in a place where they're paying you very well and you don't like the culture, you're not going to last, right? You're just going to go for the next thing, right? So, so for us, I think it's a, just a combination of, yes, you get paid very well, but also you like what we're doing. You know, we're not micromanagers. We, um, we believe what you have done in previous companies that you can do better with this company, with this tackle. You know what I mean? So, so we let in, um, let in getting more developed or, um, and getting to their max um, knowledge they can do you know what i mean we um if we were a company where constantly we're stopping them when they have a thought right we were never going to get better you know what i mean so so i think for us it's more like okay we we are here how can we be to the next level right help us to get there do you think do you believe in business to be successful, you need a little bit of luck too. Did you need luck in the beginning stages? Well, look, um, there's a picture of my business partner that I'm seeing right here on the screen, you know, um, and, and I don't know, man, like I'm, I'm Christian, you know, I believe in God and, um, and, and it's something that I, I feel like if you do good, you know, good things going to happen to you, right? And that's how I met um, my my business partner because we used to be neighbors. So he was putting together a um, um, playground in, in, in his house, and um, and I have tools. You know, I'm from Mexico. I can build anything. I want. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and uh, I was like, "Hey, how are you? I just moved here with my mother-in-law. You know, um, uh, I got married with you know my wife Jennifer and um, and." You know, we're going to be neighbors. So it's like, oh, yeah. And I was like, hey, do you need help? I can, you know, help you put this thing together. Um, and that's how we met pretty much. We put together that playground, you know, and then um, 
uh, we started getting hanging out every weekend until I lost my job in the construction industry in 2008. So that's how we got together, you know. And then he was like, "Dude, your food is really good. Um, why don't just um, open a restaurant?" And I didn't have any money, you know. I just lost my job, you know, and um, and, and and I was like, I don't know what else to do, you know. So he's like, there's a taco stand in, there's a food trucks in, in Texas, right? When I go to Texas, you know, there's a lot of food trucks down there and, um, and why don't just do that? So I went online and I started looking for food trucks and it was like a hundred thousand dollars for food truck, right? It was a lot, a lot of money for me. So, and then, um, but there was, uh, another option and that option was the, uh, a hot dog stand that you can reconfigure everything inside. So I was like, I had a truck and um, and I can tow my truck and there's a trailer that I can reconfigure everything. So I pretty much put everything in my mind how I was going to work inside the taco stand, right? So the next weekend, and it was $20,000 for that taco stand, well, hot dog stand, that I make a taco stand out of it. Um, next weekend, I went to Mark Wallace's house next door. And I said, dude, do you remember this idea? And he's like, yeah, yeah, I remember. Well, here's, um, you know, option A and option B. Option B that, you know, I can buy it for $20,000, but I don't have any money. He's like, dude, do you want to do it? I mean, your food is excellent. You know, you're a really hard worker. Um, I'll give you the money. You know, I created businesses before. And I never created a business before, you know. So he's like, I'll help you, um, and we do it together. So it's like, are you sure? And I'm like, yeah. I, I was like, I'm in. You know, let's do it. So was that luck? I have no idea. You know, I think it's one of those things where I, I wasn't afraid. Um, he wasn't afraid, you know, and, and I even said this. I, had, I didn't even finish my uh, high school, right? When I came to the United States, 16 years old, I was washing dishes. I was, you know, trying to learn the language so I can make 25, 25 more cents so I can be a prep guy, right? Um, and, and I'm just moving to the next thing, moving to the next thing, moving to the next thing, right? So this guy invested in, in me, you know, invested in, in, uh, in the personality that I have, in the, you know, um, being a hard worker and, um, and here we are after 14 years, you know. So, yeah, maybe a little bit of luck, but also being, you know, um, keep believing yourself. I think that's what it really got me here. Two, two, two comments that I want to make on that. One is, I mean, to go through losing your job, knowing that you're probably your mindset is you were probably the hardest worker at that place. And so it's probably hard for, for you to go through a process of feeling rejected when you didn't do anything, anything wrong. It's like life, life just happened in the economy and everything else. And then for you to pick up the energy and still press forward, that's, that's, that's something that a lot of people struggle with. So I think that's, that's an awesome part of your, your journey. I also think like, it's, it's interesting to hear, hear your, your story and this is this is probably the the one negative thing about franchising is when you have massive startup costs it kind of eliminates that that story from a lot of people like it strips out the next you who has all the grit and hustle in the world that nobody can out hustle them but they don't have the capital and that's that's probably the saddest part about franchising is because now now a business like yours is has grown into being a larger investment the bootstrapper can't can't enter into it. So it's such a beautiful story. And I, I imagine when you're you're meeting franchisees, you're also trying to like look between the lines and say, what's what's that chip on their shoulder that might be an intangible that says I press forward if shit hits the fan. Yeah, I I, I agree. It's um, you know, like I say, we we choose the the right franchisee, right? Um, we we have rejected a lot of people. And, and not just because we don't think they're they're good people. It's just that uh, you know, um, it is 
it needs to feel right, you know. Um, I want for them to to really be like 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 me or like you know um, just be all the time in the restaurants. I, I want you guys to be at you know knowing that the freshness is extremely important for district tackle. You know, um, the, I'm, I'm a I, I do I love sports right, and I'm very active guy. So I want for them to be active too. You know what I mean? I want for for them to to be um, to be great with people, right? So we don't want for them just because they have money, they, they feel like they can just invest in, in this retackle, you know? I want for them to actually be, uh, be just like me. So do you, now, now that you're, you know, almost, almost three years into franchising or into your franchise journey, are you pleased with how many have come on? Are you anxious? So, or- so just to be clear, um, Nick, the, um, in, even though we had this idea in 2020 when we said, oh, this track could be franchisable, we actually started franchising like we, you know, we got registered in 2021, mm-hmm. you know, at the end of 2021. So, so it has been a pretty short period of time um, when we, we started franchising. Do franchisees, when you meet them, do they... Are, are they attracted to your story? Can they see like you're going to have their back? Is that part of the magic? Um, I think so. I, I mean, a lot of them, we don't have a lot of franchisees, but, you know, um, one particular, two particular franchisees, they have said we have invested in you, you know, uh, you know what I mean? So, so that's, it put a lot of pressure on me as well, you know. But uh, but I feel um, very happy, you know, that uh, they trust in me and and they they believe in my my vision. Well, look, I mean, I I love your story. Uh, I think I've 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 always said this: brands don't sell brands, people do. And yes, you've you've figured out a way to create a point of differentiation uh, in the marketplace and the way that you prepare your food. But ultimately, I'm I'm going to buy from you. Like your story is what's going to get me excited. And knowing that you know there there's some value in as sappy as this is to have a shoulder to cry on. Like being an entrepreneur or business owner is not not easy. Being a franchisee is not easy. And most of the time, you're you're buying into a business that all of a sudden you may have been an expert in sales and marketing, or you may have been a general manager of a restaurant, but now you're thrown in and it's like, well, now you have to have all labor relations, food supply chain, landlord, lease management, staff, like it, it's complex. And to have someone like you that says, let me tell you my story. I went from selling flowers in Mexico to moving to the United States to not graduating uh, high school to fighting my way through to losing my job in 2008 to finding someone that believed in me and giving me a shot to doing this and then hustling through and then in the middle of what's arguably the toughest moment that us as human race and in, in our generations are going to go through uh, the pandemic I said let me build this opportunity for others like that's that's a pretty cool thing and I I'm grateful that you've you've shared that story with me yeah, no, thank you, Nick. I, I think, but also I want to I want to make this clear. Yes, you know, I bring a lot on the table as you know, um, being one of the co-founders of District Taco and the the actual guy who created recipes and everything, right? But but here's here's one thing, right? If I want to make sure that District Taco can function without me too, you know what I mean? So so the, the franchisees. Um, are, are safe because we created something that, um, you know, is nothing like us is in the market. There's a lot of wannabes over, out there, right? We don't want to be a, a wannabe. We want to be district tackle, okay? We want for Nick and, and your family, go, you guys want something fast, um, Mexican, you know, where um, you just walk in, put your order, and, 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 and walk out right? Where you're going to have great tacos. There's companies out there that make great burritos, right? And they're the king of burritos. We want to 
you know, I, we see them as a role models as well because we do sell burritos, right? And then there's another company that sells very uh, fast, um, hard tacos, right? So that's fine. We're in the middle, right? We're in the middle where we're selling, you know, the really, you know, great tacos, very fast. You know, we love to grill. We make salsas in-house. And, um, and I'm getting hungry right now that I'm saying that. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, and I, look, I love my product. I love my product so much that I eat there every single day, right? Awesome. So, so this is this is what we're doing for for franchisees and for future franchisees that we want to make sure that District Taco will live forever, you know, with me or without me. What a what a great great statement. Let I I just want to make sure that we we hit all the marks. If someone's watched this, they've been captivated by your conversation. Anything else you want the franchise buyer to know about the opportunity before we close out? No, uh, look, any, any, there's, um, I think for people to understand what's district taco, they really need to try it, right? I think um, there's a lot of taco companies out there. We focus so much on food and not alcohol, right? There's a lot of taco companies popping out right now with the bar, right? But we don't we don't want to focus on on alcohol. We um, we focus so much. We don't have a bar, right? And some of our stores don't sell beer. Um, we um, we focus so much on on our food, and um, and we make it very basic and clean as well, right? So um, so I think that's um, that's what makes um, make us unique. And and if anybody has any questions on the franchise world, you know, for um, how to franchise with District Tackle, you know, they can email us. Um, and, and we, we personally meet them, uh, tomorrow I'm going to meet a, uh, a prospect that, you know, um, that I'm meeting with them directly. All right. Well, look again, I'm, I'm cheering for you. I, I like the underdog story and look, if this doesn't work out, you could just start up a flower business. I mean, there's still plenty of room. <laughs> oh, you better work out, Nick. There's no way <laughs> back. Okay. There's, <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm not going back. I always said. Either go, either go, go all the way, or go back to Mexico. All right, yeah. you're going all the way. We, we yeah, see the path. The way. I'm going all the way, man. I love it, Osiris. Thank you so much for sharing your story. This is another episode of Meet the Zor. Take care. Thank you, Nick. That was great. Thank you so much for sharing your story. That was awesome.